lack of success, so let's unwrap that a little bit. Not only personal success, not only financial success, but embodied in this, contained in this, is a level of security. Uh, it's hard to be successful when you feel insecure. And I am speaking here in terms of physical security. Uh, I told you that I had spent three and a half years in a, a close custody correctional facility as a correctional officer. Thank you very much. And I observed that a, that a large number of people would like to just be left alone. But the fact is that when you're living in, that, in those close confines with other young men that are full of vinegar and testosterone and whatever else courses through their veins, um, there is a high, there's a, a, a strong tendency towards violence anyway. And, and so the best defense is to group together with like-minded people. This usually takes the form of some kind of racial identity. The Latinos have two or three groups, two or three gangs. The blacks have two or three gangs. Uh, whites have two or three gangs. There's, there's gangs that are anti-race, racial, they're, I mean, they're racial, uh, um, the racial makeup, uh, skinheads. I've, I've never seen any black members allowed in a skinhead gang. Skinhead gangs are always white guys. Uh, but there are some gangs that are multiracial, but mostly in prison, your gangs tend to form around racial makeup, racial uh, group identity. And the problem is that in order for you to survive, you have to group together with somebody with whom you have some, there is some common denominator. And it's like that in the neighborhood. It's like that in, in a neighborhood where there's, where, there are, where there's high levels of insecurity, high levels of physical threat. Um, you're in danger, just, you, you can't even walk to school without the fear of some bully taking your lunch money or, or worse, uh, physically assaulting you. So you learn to move together in groups. One of the problems in young pre-adolescent, uh, pre-gang sort of affiliations is that there's a lot of fluidity. They move in and out of different groups. It, it's, it's when they get older into the teenage years that they start identifying with a single group and that group demands high levels of loyalty. If we could interdict this behavior early, and we've tried to do this, researchers have tried to pinpoint uh, the, the, the characteristics or the, the, the um, elements of gang activity, what, what they call pre-gang activity, which is the, the, pre -adoles the adolescents, 9, 10, 11 years old uh, kids, they're grouping together. But the problem with that is, like I said, there's, there's this movement in, in and out of different groups still struggling to find themselves and therefore still struggling to find a common element with, with other people. Does that make sense? So it's difficult to interdict until it becomes a real problem, until they begin to get into a, a gang situation where that gang demands high levels of loyalty and to prove their high levels of loyalty, uh, they are often required to commit crimes, to basically embark on a path from which there is no return. Once they commit crimes, now they are vulnerable to being exposed to the police, and so it's, it, it seeks to cement that loyalty relationship with the gang. So those are some of the elements or the risk factors that lead to uh, the answer to our number one learning object, objective, the, the psychology of, of criminal Enforcement, a criminal member, a criminal gang membership. Any questions at this point? Comments? Stories from back in the days when you were in the gang? Nothing? You got nothing for me?